Yo, what's going on guys? Horcrux here. Welcome back to the channel. Before we get into today's video, a huge shout out to my patrons. You guys are absolutely amazing, as is everyone who watches my videos. So without further ado, let's get into the video, guys. What is up guys welcome back hopefully you enjoyed watching the clips nearly as much as I enjoyed making them this is a really fun build to come up with I promised one of my subscribers I would come up with a build like this and I absolutely love it let me preface this by saying guys this is not like a super meta build this is a very meme very fun build so let's get right into it fellas so you see on the character sheet we're not even going to go through any of this I'm just going to blow through what is actually important you do get up to 9,000 spell damage with continuous attack and serial it's pretty insane we are a dark elf you can be whatever just be high elf or dark elf something that gives you spell damage um, as a passive I'm using the shadow mundus for our crit I'm using a uh, bewitch sugar skulls ideally you want the uh, the purple uh, buy stat foods that'll give you a little bit more burst so let's go into the sets, fellas, how we're going to set this up. It is a little complicated, so I'll try my best to explain how everything works. So the very first ability we're using, or set we're using, is the Master's Perfected Inferno Staff. This, when you use Flame Reach, it gives you an additional 600 spell damage, because spell damage will be very important when it comes to actually bursting kids on this build. All right. So number one to the puzzle is Perfected Inferno Staff. Back bar, this will be a back bar set only. You can either use Burning Spell Weave if you have one with a infused weapon damage enchantment. This one is charged. I wasn't gonna change it to infuse. Um, you can change this to infuse, which is more ideal. You get even higher burst that way. Or you can use Clever Alchemist on your back bar. I just didn't have any jewelry or anything like that crafted. So I opted for Burning Spell Weave, which gives you a little bit less burst, but it's what I had on hand and I wasn't going to spend an arm and a leg uh, putting Clever Alchemist together. If you guys have it, definitely use Clever Alchemist with an Infuse trait on the back bar with a weapon damage enchantment. Now our monster set we're running is Kina. Kina is very important because this gives us an additional like 550 spell damage. So you run Kina to proc uh, its effect. You just have to do two consecutive light attacks. So these don't even have to hit in order to proc it. So this is why this is here instead of something like Balrogs or whatever because we're using our uh, back bar magma armor ultimate we don't care about spell pin from that set anyway I believe this set gives you the most burst for what we're trying to do so Kena is the next set and then last but not least is mechanical acuity um, you proc this by just pretty much doing any direct damage attack this gives you 100% critical strike for five seconds on a 21 second cooldown this is an absolute must-have because you have to get the crit and if you don't get the crit uh, you're gonna look like an idiot all of our armor is uh, we have six medium um, ideally you'll want seven medium I just didn't have a Kina shoulder on hand that was medium but ideally you want seven medium and that's because we're using the medium skill line passives uh, to get the spell damage you don't want any light because we're ignoring spell penetration anyway with our magma armor ult on our back bar so that's just wasted so you definitely want everything medium and then of course 
on the the jewelry you want everything infused bow damage i don't have the stones for to change this to infuse otherwise i would so uh burning spell weave or clever alchemist it's entirely up to you guys which one you want to use you should have divines on everything i again did not trait change these you want divines on absolutely everything just so you can get a higher crit because we are running the the shadow mundus which increases your critical damage so that's the basics for the set and the character sheet and just just the very basics now to set this up is a little more tricky so let's start going over some passives this is where we want to begin so first of all you notice on the skill bar we have plenty of fighters guild abilities and that's because each fighters guild ability we slot we get an additional spell damage as well thanks to the new passes being changed okay again we need flame reach to proc perfected uh, spell weave and these are just two filler slots the expert hunter and trap beast you know whatever put yeah you know, whatever here on your bar again this is just for the spell damage we have inner light inner lights super crucial to this build because in the major skill skill line we have a passive might of the guild casting a major guild ability grants you empower increasing the damage or light and heavy attacks by 40 percent this is instrumental to our burst combo i will go over the burst combo in depth in just a second force pulse this is just here in case you don't completely finish off your enemy you can force pulse him for like another 9k force pulse 10k force pulse just to make sure you get the job done it's very important to have flame reach and not the, the shorter distance one because you need to make sure you have the biggest range possible just to make sure you, you can actually cast and get this proc off. And then we have Dawnbreaker on our front bar here. And this again is to just give us the passive spell damage on our front bar thanks to the Fighter's Guild passive here. Okay, now back bar. Not really too important. Uh, Cauterize and coagulate. This is just here for heals in case we get into those oh shit scenarios. Channeled acceleration. If you do not have access to the Sigic or skill line, it is going to kind of gimp your build a little bit. So the reason we're running channel acceleration is because this gives us major expedition, which is amazing for 36 seconds, but also gives a minor force. Minor force increases all your critical damage by 10%. So you have to run this. You just absolutely have to. Otherwise, you're aren't going to be nearly as high as they need to be so channel acceleration is a must volatile armor this is just you know a resistance buff to make sure you don't get one shot before you get your burst combo off molten ornaments you have to have this ability so this is your major sourcing buff but it also increases your own heavy damage with uh, your own damage with heavy attacks is increased by 50 percent while active so you have to have molten ornaments channel acceleration inner light and flame reach those are your absolute must-have abilities in addition to corrosive armor you have to have these on your bar so corrosive armor they change it to where you completely ignore the enemy's uh, physical and spell resistance so when you hit them you're hitting them for a flat value and it's pretty absurd as you saw in the clips now here's the skills again back bar again have to have corrosive channel acceleration molten ornaments inner light and flame reach um, all your other passes are good as well you know undaunted uh, uh continuous attack if you're in cyrodiil that's that's pretty substantial when you're going in for a huge burst in cyrodiil as well heavy armor don't want to worry about these passes light armors a destruction staff skill line forgot to point this one out as well you need tri-focus fully charged inferno staff heavy attacks deal 12 percent additional damage so you have to have this passive as well and then i believe don't quote me on that oh yeah ancient knowledge having inferno staff as well increases your targets ability by an additional 10 percent and i'm pretty sure even though this says destruction staff abilities ignore 10 percent of the spell resistance i mean this one isn't really relevant to have but if your uh poison armor falls off it's pretty awesome to have this as well just for your force balls so anyway that does it for like the passives and the skills uh, we'll go over the cp in just a second potions guys you have to have a movable pods you just have to have it it takes like four seconds to get this combo off and anyone and their mother is going to cc you and time is a factor it takes a second to proc all this and you have like a one maybe two second window to get a couple you know heavy attacks off so it's very important that you have a movable pods as well 
So when it comes to the actual combo itself, give me just one second. Let me run down here and get my ultimate. I should have done this before the video, guys. Very unprofessional, but it's actually not too hard of a combo. The trick is lining it up on someone. So as you guys know, heavy attacks in this game are like super, well, heavy destro attacks are very like super wonky. Sometimes they just miss even though you're right on their target. Uh, this attack can be roll dodge, it can be cloaked, it can be blocked. There's a lot of things that can go into negating this burst. But here is the basics. So you'll have obviously your channel acceleration up, your, your buff, cauterize, whatever. Heavy molten ornaments, pop corrosive armor, light attack, light attack, front bar, flame reach, hold down your heavy attack, and while it's in the air, you want to enter light. So they hit this target dummy for like 60k. That's pretty good. Um, if you come over to this guy and get the buffs, you can actually hit this Reaper for 117k uh, heavy attack. So I'll go ahead and do the combo one more time uh, for you guys, just, just so you can see. So the way Empower works from the, the inner light, the reason I'm doing it in this order is because while the heavy attack is in the air, you can use empower and it will still empower that heavy attack that's in flight you don't have to use empower and then throw the heavy attack so this is the most efficient way possible i can get this to go off so you can buff up obviously pop corrosive light attack light attack front bar flame reach wind up a heavy attack empower animation cancel and it's it's simple as that i'll show you again the heavy attack so this is a normal heavy attack, okay? Uh, 13, you know, whatever. If you empower it before, okay, it will do uh, 13, blah, 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 whatever. That may have been wrong, hold on. Get this one more time. So we're just gonna do a normal heavy attack. Oh, of course it, it messes up. <laughs> so normal heavy attack is doing uh, 13, uh, 1,000 damage right so if you empower heavy attack it should do a little bit more it's not doing more i'm not sure why guys it's also really trying to screw me over so i believe what's going on is that this three seconds you get from using it so if you go to the major skill skill line this is also why we use inner light dead last is because you can get this heavy attack off with empower but this only lasts for three seconds. So by the time you finish your cast animation for Empower, okay, and wind up your heavy attack and it launches, this is already falling off. So you need to use Empower, uh, your, your inner light, excuse me, at the latest point possible in your burst. So if it's in flight, just boom, Empower, there you go. So that does it for the, the combo. Now we'll go over into our CP tree. Show you guys what I'm rocking. Red tree really doesn't matter. Blue tree is a bread and butter. So you want mastered arms. You want deadly aim. You want fighting finesse. And then you want weapons expert. That's going to give you the most overall damage for your heavy attacks by far. So as long as you have those four passes, you'll be hitting like a freight train. Uh, the red and the green tree, and that really doesn't matter. That's all preference. That's not the point of the build. So yeah, um, hopefully... I explained everything in this. We went over the potions, went over the skills, went over the burst combo, character sheet, kind of things to know, the passives. I believe that's all, guys. There may be more. If there is more, I will gladly redo this video and, and include it. But uh, as it stands, I believe that's the high points of the build. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. It was really fun making it. I, I really had. A good time uh, it was kind of frustrating sometimes to uh, actually hit people with this ability without getting completely trained but uh, it was really fun if you guys want to see more build videos like this please let me know down in the comments and as always guys please like and sub to the channel but only do so if you enjoy the content only 72 per, well actually 72 percent of you guys are not currently subscribed so if you could do me a favor please subscribe helps me out helps the channel a lot helps keep me motivated and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.